You have just entered the Katie Ma podcast. Keyboard plus mouse or die. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to episode 24 of the KB Mod Podcast. Thank God for my helpful co co host who informed me it was episode 24. I did not know. I'm Jack Bauer. These are the next 24, 24. podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch it? You, were you into 24? I never got into it. People religiously watch that show. I, uh, my lady friend's uh, mother is obsessed with it. Oh, really? I never she watched it. Every, every season on DVD. And oh, jeez. They're She's making always a like, movie, watch this, and I'm like, nah, dude. I must say, Kiefer Sutherland has a sexy-ass voice. Yeah, he does. He does a bunch of commercials now, too, though. He does the bank commercials. That's where I hear him. I think Bank of America he does. He's the NHL guy, too. I'm sure John would know uh, that. Yeah. Whenever it's a national game, you know, he's the guy who goes, like, this is a televised broadcast of the NHL. Nice. This is a presentation of Speaking the of the NHL, NHL Bob was at a yeah, that's game it. tonight. The national Hockey League. I was at a Penguins game tonight. I don't want to talk about it. That one. All the Penguins. Are, they're doing great right now. That, that was a great game. I don't know if we've experienced a five-game losing streak since, like, 04. Nope. Yeah, new territory again. <laughs> it's not going well. <clears throat> Nick Fenton, how you doing? I'm doing great. School started again, and I'm just super excited. <laughs> just going to go out there and give her 110%, you know. <laughs> Is that the pep speech? Minnesota fan. Yeah, it's just, that's, there's just one guy, and he says one sentence. Go out there and give her a 110%, you know. Go out on the ice there, guy. <laughs> the Minnesota pep talk for college. Good stuff. Yeah. Brandon, are you with us? Brandon. I am. I'm oh, okay. Good. You sound, yeah, you sound good. Brandon's somehow perched over a, w- a window trying to get Wi-Fi. Actually, what Brandon is actually Perfect. perched over is the body of a hotel clerk. <laughs> <laughs> That's murder. Yeah. I could drop off at any moment, but I am I am here at the moment. That's good. That's good. <laughs> what is... Uh, what is I, uh, yeah. I had, I had actually more news to report than usual because I started playing Skyrim this weekend, finally. Very and, nice. Uh, <laughs> <the> mods, <laughs> mods for... Oh, yep. no, did he? <laughs> did he I, I was already? just so into the mods. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can hear you. You, Yeah, well, Brandon, I didn't know if you, I think you tweeted this, that you haven't even played the game. You've just been installing mods over and over again. That's what I've been. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm only a few hours in because I was just so busy trying to get all the mods. And I actually, <laughs> uh, like, I got a I got a water texture mod. And so I recorded, like, a before and after just to see the difference. And uh, it's just, it's amazing. How, how big a difference the mods make. And so I'm only maybe four or five hours in because I was so busy messing around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, completely changed the game. Yeah. to follow up Brandon's <coughs> mod craziness. <clears throat> Damn, excuse You're me. right over there? Jeez. I don't know. Uh, has anyone seen, <laughs> this is on topic, by the way, the greatest Skyrim mod of the mall? I know what you're talking about. The, the, ranch, uh, the, the, macho, the, the one macho. that turns all the dragons into Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> yeah, that was incredible. And whenever they breathe fire, he just goes, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the the freaking, without the wings and just the arms, is the most creepy <laughs> thing in the world. They fly. Uh, so Brandon good. also spent his uh, life savings on a gaming laptop this week, but his uh, Skype is a piece of crap, so. Yeah. <laughs> He has an i7, a bajillion gigs of RAM, and like 3869.90s or something in it. You should make blogs of every hotel room that you go into. <laughs> you can make a killing on a website featuring hotel Wi-Fi quality. Ooh, that's not a bad Ooh, idea, actually. Do that, joke. and you vlog the room quality as well. You could be like, hotelreviewerbro91.com. Because <laughs> that's a <laughs> website I could go to. <laughs> I would not click on that link. Ever. I would say this is definitely a horse penis. I'm not. <laughs> I saw that. I think the 91 guys... would really make it. Yeah. <laughs> Legitimate, probably. Yeah. Have you guys ever Legit. heard of uh, Birth the Conqueror? It means nothing to me. No, nope. it's not ringing a bell. It's a show on Travel Channel. Anyway, he just like goes and does like bungee jumping at various. Like, it's like a travel show, but he just does like crazy stuff. <clears throat> um. 
he his Twitter, he does a thing every hotel when they leave, they make a scene because they're like TV movie guys. Mm-hmm. They make a scene in the room and then leave and then take a picture <laughs> of the hotel room when they leave and then hashtag it with what will the maid think. And so <laughs> so it's always like something like one time they just put tons of like fake blood everywhere. Oh, I see. And, like, <laughs> oh, jeez. One time they made a giant face out of all the towels. Like, <laughs> the, just left it in there. But they. <clears throat> wow. So they don't actually system. like decimate shit or cause a huge problem. No, it's but. always something just completely weird. Like, <laughs> making. You know, <laughs> You're like, sometimes they light the room on fire and just leave. <laughs> like, got you, mate. <laughs> There's a lot of casualties, but it's hilarious. Now that she doesn't have a job because her hotel burned down, what do you think? I just throw fecal matter all over the walls. <laughs> nice. Uh, what have what has everyone been uh, been playing this week, gaming wise? Dungeon Defenders. Been yes. playing. Been playing a while. Been playing the COD Four. Jumped on Tribes for a night. Was kept getting on the other team from Brandon and Biznich, so I just turned it off. <laughs> that sort of thing. That is a death sentence, pretty much. <laughs> I played Tribes. Oh, Bob's here. Yeah, hi, I'm here. Hey, Bob. I might sound like a robot right now. That's what everybody else sounds uh, like. No, you sound fine. Dan, to me, sounds like a robot, but we'll see. I think I'll be just down. Yeah, so no, I've been playing Tribes, actually. I hadn't given it too much playtime. I was sucked into Saints Row the Third and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood for a bit. Um, but then a bunch of the guys in the KB Mod event convinced me to play Tribes last night, and we had a good old time. Is, uh, have any new train simulators come out or anything you're actually interested in? <laughs> no. Nope, nothing new on that front. Did you get the dildo bat in Saints Row? Yeah. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yep. That game does look insanely fun. I, it's so fun. I should have bought it. It really it is so sale. much fun. <laughs> Just the sound effects that they made for the dildo bat, it, it's... <laughs> It's, it's you, know, you know there were ten sound engineers sitting around just hitting dildos off surfaces in the office. so off. believable. Oh. I've never heard Nick Fenton this excited about anything. It just sounds it's like dildo. a dildo gloriously flapping through the wind. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> flapping. I've been, uh, I've been playing the, like some Counter-Strike. I've been doing some... Uh, Open server oh, wow. or open lobbies. I know that's a shocker, but it actually is lately. And uh, yeah, I've been filling a forty-man Dust Two server for a couple nights. And Jesus, been, and then but there's lots of bomb planting and objective. <laughs> there's a lot of objective play in the twenty-on-twenty game. Um, but yeah, that's been fun. Um, Dan, you've been streaming some WoW as usual, and. Yeah, play Dungeons. <laughs> play Dungeons. Maybe those of you, maybe those of you who don't follow Ch- Scott's channel, you might want to make your little announcement again here, Scott. Oh yeah, I guess it's true. So. I um, I'm gay. No, no, that's not what I meant. I uh, I'm going to be moving to California uh, in about two weeks from now. Actually, a little more than that to go work at Machinima with the uh, with the live team over there. So yeah, if you did not hear, hear hear it here first. So or second. So, yeah. Congratulations. High five. A huge congrats five. to Scott. Five. Yeah. Awkward silence yeah. after the word. Swag. Thank Swag. you. Thank you. Swag. Swag. So, yeah, one thing that'll be good is it'll be earlier for recording the podcast for me. We're talking about this, but. Yes. It'll be at 9 o'clock if we record at 12 or whatever we do. Hopefully earlier, no. Do we do? So. It'll be it'll be pretty swaggerific. Lots of swag, Yes. Yes. You have to learn since you're going sure to hope it won't be that. Yes. Mm. You're going to be a swagaholic. <laughs> Fwiz phrases? Is that where we're going with this? Swagaholic? Uh, I love Fwiz so much. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he's, he's such a bro. Yeah. Yeah, I love Fwiz. You just want to, like, bro piece. No, like, I just want to play GameCube with him. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna come over to LA and we're gonna play GameCube me and Quiz. Nice. Yeah, I'll be down. Yeah, I'm working. I I got you know I'm driving out there, driving across the country on uh, the 23rd. I'm leaving from here, so I don't know four or five days to get out there, and then 
All I know is uh, I have a job and a car. That's it. So, <laughs> and clothing. And clothing. That well, that's Sounds it. like it's a place to sleep. Good yeah, job. Unfortunately, <laughs> have Some people sleep house, on the beach. In the house that you may or may not stay in when you get there. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that you'll be wearing clothing. That's true. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> definitely optional for, for the people that inhabit that place. Um, yeah, I'll be staying with um, I'll be staying with Matt, um, Jay, and and Hutch for a little while, and then there there's some opportunities lining up for another place with another guy that works there. With my parents, bro. Where where are your parents in? Uh, like forty yeah, minutes man. from L.A., dude. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> nice. Sounds like a good commute. I'll just right. show up at their door and be like, I know your son, I met him on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> we had, we had relations. On the internet. I yeah. want to break the news to you that he is gay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like he has he has two kids, but he also swings the other way too. Um well, you gotta get around. That's true. That's true. Yeah, no, it'll be good. I'm excited. It's just I'm one of those people that does everything in the eleventh hour. Like I just I it's hard for me to like I gotta like I'm I gotta sell stuff and post it on Craigslist and I'm just like God it still feels like two you know it's only like two weeks but here's what you do you just chop everything up and leave it in a pile <laughs> in the middle of your apartment I don't need that I don't need that deposit back in anyway. put your Xbox on the top <laughs> light it up yeah <laughs> what will the maid think yeah. oh God <laughs> what a prank I'm gonna post a picture on Twitter that I've just defecated all over the apartment it's <laughs> called will evidence the landlord think. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. What a, what, okay. I don't know where we go from there, Brandon. We're what have you been asking? Playing? Who is playing? What? Yeah. No one has jumped in. So let's ask. I said that I, I have been playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Only uh, they released a new map. So. You're playing tribes, is what you said, right? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I've been playing Tribes. They released a new patch and yeah. a new map and stuff, so um, I swear it feels like a different game every week because they're making changes and adding features and stuff, so. Is Bella Omega still Enjoying it. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit better, but it's still, I would still say it's the worst map. The new map is kind of cool. It's, uh, I don't even really know how to describe it. It's like you're on, it's like you're, like you're in a, you're you're flying around a town, like an old style Greek town or something. Huh. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I like that. Feel, you feel like a giant. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, really yeah. It's, a, it's a definitely. Traps. Yeah, it's a, it's a very different design than all the other maps. So I, I like it. Um, they say they're still going to tweak it a lot. So it's probably not the final version, but um, it's definitely better than than the other map uh, than Bella. Please tell me they buffed the snipers for God's sake. Please. So <laughs> empowered. Yeah, because because they needed it. Yeah, they needed. No, they actually it. nerfed the snipers, which is which has made it uh, quite a bit more tolerable. I feel like the the balance seems to be getting better. Um, and I mean, they're they're definitely taking all the feedback that they see on the forums and stuff. You can see it every week. So, I think the game's evolving. They're starting to have like esports broadcasts and stuff. And uh, I didn't yeah, get I... to watch it, but John actually told me I think last night they had a match that went into overtime with like it was a second, second left cap. and they capped at the last second. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking I think the to time had run out, the but they had had possession of the flag or something really. Yeah, time keeps going oh, right. if, the, started, if yeah. the team has uh, <clears throat> has possession. Time keeps going, even if they're losing at the buzzer, so they can still tie it too. <clears throat> yeah, so I know Bart, who we had on uh, a past podcast, has been he's been uh, tweeting and stuff about the tribes broadcasts. So looking forward looking forward to big things. So um, switching gears just a little bit here, has anybody given any playtime to Blacklight Retribution this past week? I did. I did get a chance to, and I am awful at it, but that game is fun. Is that the first time you tried it? Um, that's the first time I gave it more than about an hour. Um, so yeah, I played it for, for about two, and I'm it terrible. Handles, it handles really well. Well, the thing is, <clears throat> as far as it, those being the two kind of free-to-plays that we have our hands on right now, uh, it's going down. So if you want to play it more, you got till the fifteenth. So anyone out here, out there who's listening and has the beta, you got till the fifteenth on Blacklight <clears throat> um, before it goes down for an indefinite amount of time. So I'm not not sure how long it's going to be down. And that's uh, about the time that we start up Occupy Jared Gerritsen. Yeah, right about <laughs> then. Occupy Zombie Studios. Gerritsen, Gerritsen, by the way. 
We love you, Jared. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. Once you get once you start customizing your guy, Bob, that's when it, you actually play better because you will be able to use stuff. People yeah. who are like level thirty yeah. just destroy. <clears throat> so. Yep. Yeah, I noticed. haven't even really done any customization to, to my character in Blacklight. Like, I feel like I haven't even. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Brandon. He's co- oh, did he totally drop? Maybe. He uh, might have. Uh oh. <laughs> He's just talking <laughs> in chat. I hate my life. What I was gonna say, my two major complaints with with Blacklight, um, that aren't really that major because the game is a lot of fun. Like Bob was saying, I probably spent like maybe five or six hours total playing. I didn't play any of this week, but um, like I don't. I feel like when you a- a- ads, like it it really slows down. You just have to get does. used to that. Like and you, it's so much slower than yeah. So any what, other game. What I've you know with COD, you know, you just kind of go in and out, in and mm-hmm. out of ads, but. There, you really have to be able to commit to it and have a beat on someone. Right. And There's no snap ADSing, really. In this right. Yeah. Um, when you turn on someone, you have to turn out of ADS, ADS yeah. then get a beat on them, then ADS, and then kill them. So if someone gets a jump on you, it's very hard to recover. But um, <clears throat> it's unreal, so bunny hopping's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean that's it's still that doesn't really affect the. I mean, it would be nicer if it was a little faster, but it's not like a major complaint. And then the other one too is just the um, the the ammo types. We had talked about that earlier, Dan. But like the whatever the acid ammo or like you just die so fast to some of that ammo. And yeah, like, Jared, feels so Jared's unfair. out there having a hell of a time balancing figuring it. out because they really want it in mm. the game, but they're having a real time balancing. He said, no, it's not just. It's not just that you feel you're dying to people and you know raging right. over it. No, they really, they really are having a hard time balancing it. The poison stuff got nerfed a lot, but it still fucks up your screen so bad that it's kind of a good, uh, <clears throat> kind of compromise there with that one. Yeah. The electric one though, it messes up your screen so bad yeah. <laughs> that if you're not dead, you might as well be anyway because you can't. Yeah, you, you can't, can't do anything for anything. a little while. <clears throat> so. But yeah, that game is. That game is I fun. have been playing that this week actually as well, <clears throat> trying to get back into it, get my setups because you got to earn so much. But they're changing that too. But did play Dungeon Defenders as well. Yeah, yeah, it's love that game. Awesome game. Playing last night with uh, Nick and Captain Sparkles. They're showing me what to do, and uh, I had no idea what the fuck was going on for me. <laughs> for most of it, I need to play that. I've had it for a little while and haven't even touched it. The it's art fun. style looks awesome. I don't. I didn't really see. I haven't watched the replay yet of the stream. But give me, a, give me a quick rundown. I mean, is it? Is it? Um, it's tower defense. Tower so defense, right? Crystal in the middle. It's got well, like a whole loot grabbing kind of mm-hmm. thing yeah. in, in that too. Yeah, there's loot everywhere, and you can uh, buy stuff like TF2. <clears throat> kind of like really, it really gets people addicted to getting items in it. Um, Hats. I don't know if there's uh, any I, don't hats, th- I don't think you can change your person's thing. appearance. Mm. Pets are a huge thing in it. Um, <laughs> so, but I had a lot of fun with it, and I've, you know, I kind of thought, I just bought it on a whim last night, and I was just kind of like, <clears throat> well, I'll play it for this, but then I was like, okay, this is really, really fun, actually. <laughs> Especially yeah. when you see the high-level people. Because I was playing with, you know, I think I think Jordan Captain Sparrows is like, well, he was like forty or something when we started, mm. and Nick was like I don't know mid twenties, maybe thirty. Yeah, something more. When we started, and uh, they were just crushing stuff in the first game, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, this is crazy. And then we got into a game. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm running out of <laughs> throat here. Uh, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Happens I've to never experienced that. Dan's got some really hot throat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we got into a game with a max level dude named Horsecock Johnson. Yes. What, a, what a bro! Nice. nice. I won't even say the name of his pet because it's a little <laughs> for this. Pet. It's what worse than that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was a legend. And then we let him down. We lost. Yeah, we lost. <laughs> was he was pretty sweet, bro. Though? He was pretty mad. He raged quick. Yeah. <laughs> But 
Yeah, so it's really fun. I got 33 levels in one night, which I guess is abnormal. Wow. <laughs> so Jeez. Yeah, Slightly abnormal, yes. How long did you play for? <laughs> a couple hours. Uh, I think the stream's think two hours. Probably, we didn't play that much, though. We were just yeah, in we searched games, games for a while, too. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. So. Mm. Some power leveling. It's $15 right now, but it goes on sale a lot. So you can probably get it for 5 or 10 at some Speaking point. Speaking of sales, uh, what would you guys hazard a guess at you spent during the Steam holiday sale? About 10 bucks, because I'm fucking professional. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I'm in that boat, actually. About three or four games for 10 bucks. <laughs> I spent about 70 yeah, I'm probably 20, 25 or 30 total. No, it's just because I bought Saints Row 3 and Assassin's Creed Revelations, with her, which were both 30 bucks when they went on sale, and I got a couple other things, I think. Yeah, I escaped at about 60. <laughs> but but that was a that was a successful Steam sale. That Gabe Newell guy. <laughs> the bro. That, uh, that'll uh, lead us right into our first. Yeah, that'll lead us right into our first news topic. Oh, Brandon spent 25. He's typing in chat. Um, <laughs> Because he's not sure. Delay, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon's going to drive to the Verizon store right now and get a 4G modem. <laughs> we now interrupt your scheduled programming to bring you an urgent broadcast on the front lines of America. Uh, uh, but yeah, for the news, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was Steam Double Sales for seventh straight year. So that was the announcement. Um, PC Gaming is dead. <laughs> yeah, it's dead. I mean, it's pretty dead True. overall, but... <laughs> Oh, and people hate hate DRM too. You yeah, know. DRM yeah, people, really turns off PC gamers. And well, all a lot of us are pirates too. Yeah, we're just total pirates. I mean, a lot of people forget that Steam, the platform itself, is actually a form of DRM to an extent, but it's so completely, um, uh, you know, face. unintrusive that that you don't mind. And actually, there's so many benefits to using it that we fanboy over it a lot. I know. Um, but why would I mean? But it's really, it's such a great platform to distribute content and, and, you know, applications, why don't they just use it? It doesn't work on Mac well, bro. You ever watch that video? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work on my Mac. This <laughs> copy of Portal 2, where do I get it? You do not, I just love the part when it's like, it wants to start up with a computer. It's like, you do not deserve to start up with my computer. <laughs> you do not deserve. Oh, God. Uh, over, uh, along with this team, I mean, you know, obviously that's amazing. It's only been around seven years, by the way. Oh, it's yeah. It's doubled every year that it's yeah, <laughs> existed. Yeah. Um, but it really is the thing that drives PC gaming to <laughs> really stay for a while there. I would say it's pretty well established again now. Um, but for a few years there, especially right after the first Xbox came out, but then when 360 and PS3 just came out, PC was kind of in a bad way. But Steam just kept on chugging. <laughs> yep. Oh, people There's... hated the idea of Steam when it first came out, man. Especially, like, Counter-Strike. Well, I remember, too. People when were like, I am out. not playing 1.6 on Steam. You know, 1.5, get the fuck out of here with Steam and all this. And, man, is that turned around, obviously. Because, like, anything new, people don't like it. But they ended up yeah, doing they're... it so well that people are like, I, I will only use Steam. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I haven't really ever had a problem, per se, with Origin, although I know the horror stories of support and everything with it. Yeah. But it's more just, like, seems really good, so why would I... Right. Why would I stop? Right. Um, but there's some other crazy figures of this. So, obviously, we just said seventh straight year, they've doubled, doubled, doubled their, uh, yeah. <laughs> their sales. There's 1,800 games, 1,800-plus games on Steam. So, yeah, no, they're not all good. <laughs> We're not saying that, but yeah, there's a lot out there if you want things. it. 40 million registered accounts. Obviously not all active, once again, but 40 million. And 780 petabytes of data has been downloaded. That's that's a lot. Of, that is. It's, it's big. It's a large number. Man. Man, and I complain about our Amazon S3 bill. <laughs> I know, right, dude? <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Val's not using Amazon to distribute their content. Yeah. But first and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody for supporting the podcast. But holy shit, yes, <laughs> it rapes the server. I, well, you know what? I, I'm guessing if Valve wants the premier premier speeds that they get, 
uh, they're using Podbean. There's no question they're using Podbean. They <laughs> yeah. host all good... their files. <laughs> and they, I mean, Pod, they probably only pay for the you know standard subscription too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one, that one's quick. The eight ninety five or whatever. Or they actually charged when John got charged four four years worth of Podbean yeah. for one month. Uh, three of those were actually valve bills that went to John by mistake. So. <laughs> Oh my god! And then trying to deal with our customer support is the worst experience ever. That I eventually just said, "Fuck it, have my two hundred dollars. I don't want to talk to you anymore." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like origin support, oddly enough. Yeah, you're like, I can't believe they even responded to you. I put in a ticket. Oh god, here we go in the pod being ran again. But I, I put in a ticket, and like three weeks later, they were like, "There's no problem with your account closing ticket." <laughs> like, cool, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I fixed it. And you, yeah, you had already fixed it. I already it. Yeah, had realized that even though the files were still there, they weren't linked anymore. I had to re-upload. They were, like, gone, actually. Well, and I think we're all in a better place now. We are. Every, everything has been sorted out. We've got a great host that isn't going to rape my wallet. And um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're in a happy place. So, so along with uh, Steam. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, getting back to that. With it being, you know, so massive and kind of a catalyst for all this, uh, developers have to be happy with it. I mean, overall, you you would yeah. have to be, well, unless you're EA, but you would have to be otherwise, because you get this distribution platform right away. I don't know what the business, you know, we don't know what the business side is as far as who gets a cut and all that kind of stuff, but the Steamworks stuff with, like, the patching and getting developer tools and oh, yeah. built-in DRM has to be on Steam. A lot of games, you know, you couldn't ask for much more. So no. Valve knows what they're doing. So thank you, Valve. Good guy, Valve. That's what I'll say. Gabe is the boss. Yep. Scumbag Origin. <laughs> <laughs> Origin just bans your entire account, not just your game, but every game you've ever bought on there. You just can't play it anymore. <laughs> That's awesome. I remember Eat My Diction, I think, tweeted the other day because he, he was having trouble getting BF3 working after he downloaded it. And he, it just said, you're, you've been in, your wait in queue is nine minutes, but it said it like four times at like yeah. 40 minute intervals. <laughs> so it was like nine minutes, 40 minutes later, nine minutes. So thank you, Origin. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. Origins of Bro. Uh, the next thing, uh, Dark Souls, so which is a very well reviewed console title right now, is getting a, a PC petition here that's really picked up steam. I think the last I saw it had forty eight thousand signatures. Uh, um, yeah, that was when we posted. That it. was when we posted it. So what was but, funny is uh, yeah. I you know sourced the story from I believe Maximum PC or PC Game one of the two, and. Uh, when they posted it, which was like I think five hours earlier, it was at like forty five thousand in their article. So yeah, it's definitely picking up picking well, up pretty quickly. And it stemmed from a post that the uh one of the developers, I guess, on the forums. Well somebody said, asked. Yeah. Somebody on the forums asked. Someone who'd already played it actually on console. Right. Was like, you know, is there any chance at all of you guys responding? It was a very well thought out post, you know, by the, the person on the forums. So it wasn't like a why you no know PC, Dark Souls? <laughs> I know I want that game. I don't know about you guys, but I, I just do. want some. It's, it's just, supposed no. to be exceptionally difficult. Yeah, it's just a ball buster. Apparently, I thought about I, buying it, it for Xbox, but Xbox. was it actually one of the developers that had responded, or was it a community manager? It was a Namco. Uh, Namco, I believe it was. I don't think it was a. I think it was a guy on the development team. I don't know if it was an actual. You know, guy who has any say, right. but um, it reached every major site, so I think there is some legs to it. Nice. Moral of the story is it's something we're hoping for. Yeah, yeah. They say, I, I believe it's so hard because you only have one life. I think it's like Diablo Hardcore all the time. Oh, God, Dan, you're going to cry again. I am going to cry again. <laughs> cry again. Oh. Cry time. That was <laughs> Five like, ever. Five ever. <laughs> That was like a week's worth of my barbarian. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob having to console Dan. Yep. That was the last time I played Diablo 2. <laughs> you were like, never again. <laughs> Lag through that town portal. 
Your deeds of valor will be remembered. <laughs> Motherfucker. Burned into your memory forever. It's like that old sweat nightmare uh, about that. Imagine if there was hardcore WoW. No, don't, actually. Oh. <laughs> that seems like a terrible thing to imagine. Wow, wow would have, like, three players. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no one John, would have John Dom, and somebody here. else would still be playing. <laughs> See, I think the RP servers actually should have been hardcore. People used to play Iron Man. I thought about it once. Doing all, where all you can do is, if you die, you're done. And all you can do is use Gary you find. So... <laughs> Well, but that no. requires accountability, and fuck that. Yeah, no one wants that. <laughs> this is the internet. Speaking of accountability, in the worst segue in history, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft Connect is coming to the PC in February, and that has fuck nothing yeah. to do with accountability. <laughs> but Woo! Yeah, Connectables! Yeah. 60 frames a second, plus. Yeah. I don't understand why it's $250, though. I don't either, and there's a student discount. Oh, oh sweet! Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, Nick, you can. Uh, on that. You can. Why get does a student need to connect? I don't. What? what? All the learning you can do by <laughs> what? Turning your penis at different angles in 3D. Because if it's connect. appropriate, that if is If it's exactly. Or. If it's exactly the same as the 360 one, why don't you just buy the 360? It is literally the same. Plug it in. It has some stuff written for Windows. I don't, I don't, I don't it's actually it. called Connect for Windows. That's like, does it include a bunch of applications or? Nope. If you flail your arms for thirty minutes, it opens uh, Microsoft Word. So. <laughs> no, I think I, I thought I heard something about like if you make arm gestures, like you know, like YMCA style, it'll work. It'll for open Windows different 8. applications. Oh, it'll work. God, is that true? In seriousness, yeah, I make customs with like give it the finger. My thing, my computer like will shut. You get to bend to the side and make a P, and it'll open up like all your porn bookmarks. That would be fantastic, <laughs> dude. I would get it. Just show it a tube, and it opens up tube galore. Yes, I'm buying it. If it does that, I'm buying it. Okay. <laughs> or I wonder if it's just so intuitive, like you unzip and it knows what you want to do. <laughs> it's audio based. <laughs> Here's a zipper. <laughs> well, there will be well, there will be voice commands, obviously. Yeah. To connect, so you can be like connect. tube galore, Asian horse porn. Whoa. And then it all opens up. <laughs> you know what's awesome? Not that I, just, I would ask I just for that. Devolve into exactly what we talked about before. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, how could it not? When you've put out a two hundred and fifty dollars peripheral that no one can really use properly. <laughs> yeah, well, that would brand to be seen. I mean, I've seen people like it's just to me. It's just the practicality of like who's going to use that. It's more work. Like even if the voice commands are good, I mean, if it's really good, okay. But, like, 90% of the time, that stuff is just still not good enough for people to want to use it. They just use the mouse. They well, just, I, think what just people, like, I think what they're interested in doing is creating the minority report uh, right. kind of UI. And the only way you're going to be able to utilize that is if you're either using, like, a giant projector. So you got well, this huge screen out. and it's catching your movements, surface. you know. Or, like, you could go with six screens. Yeah, and, and maybe that would be useful, but to get the refined movement of a mouse, you're, you're going to have difficulty. So I don't even know in, in terms of productivity if that's going to be worthwhile. There's well, actually a third way, know. Bob. You could be you let me know when some research gets surface. Oh, you, you know they're going to. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's yeah. like ten grand. they are going to get it. And yep. you let me know, and we'll come down, and we'll see if it works. And someone's going to give it to Bob because they don't want it anymore. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Bob gets things. Um, literally everything about it doesn't make sense for a PC. The biggest thing when I first read it before I even wrote about it was like I tried to picture myself in my basement using a Kinect, and I was like, I don't have room to do many movements. My monitor would not even be close to, you know, it would be at like <laughs> chest level. It wouldn't even be at eye level, so I have to look down at the game. And it's like a 23-inch monitor, so it's not like... A big screen TV. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it has huge implications for PC gaming, and I think it's way overpriced uh, for what it is, but I think that the the coolest applications of Kinect have yet to be seen. The homebrew stuff that's been come up with so far, I think is pretty cool, and I'm sure that it's something developers will latch on to, but I agree. For PC gaming, I don't know, I don't know that it makes sense. Well, the most... 
the articles I was reading were speculating actually that developers won't be really going after it much because no one's going to buy it at 250. <laughs> That's like the thing. But <clears throat> my God, for that price, you could buy half an iPad. <laughs> Just half of it cut. Just half of it cut the middle. Yeah. That would be a better investment, actually. Half an iPad over at Connect. Yep. Uh, well, under under what I only have tagged is what the fuck. We have Rager. Ra- Rager. We Rager. We have That's Razor's hard. Project Fiona, which was uh, covered by uh, Kotaku today. Kotaku. And what a product. Yeah, what a product. I... <laughs> If you haven't seen it, it is essentially a one thousand dollar. I don't know. It tablet. wants to be an it's iPad, a PlayStation Vita. <laughs> it does. That yeah. is what it looks like—a a large giant PlayStation Vita. Vita. Yeah. And they're selling it. The, the, the kind of the, the really confusing parts are that they're going to be selling it for. They're thinking a thousand dollars. Which trying I just, to keep it under. They're, they said they're yeah. really. They're one of their big goals is to keep it under a thousand. But right. they're, um, they're trying to make up that they money they're so. losing on the on the blade, actually. Mm. Well, they need to use that blade to tend to other things, like use the blade to themselves. cut the prices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I feel terrible. <laughs> you should. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. Initial thoughts on that when you when you guys saw it. What was the first well, that came to mind? I said I, was... I want to kill myself. It's exactly what I said. <laughs> 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 I tweeted the article, and then John was like, "John was like, Razor makes some excellent peripherals," and then there were lots of exclamation points. <laughs> uh, but I think that hmm. what their goals here are. Now, let me flesh this out a little more for you. Flesh light. Yeah, the, shed some, shed some, shed some light while you flesh it out. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the hardware that they had specked out um, wasn't really in the initial articles? I saw i7. Yeah, it's going to have an i7, but they're saying it's only going to be uh, one of the dual-core i7s. Mm. So, you know, it's going to be a tablet-type processor. Now, it's going to be an i7, so it's going to have the onboard uh, graphical capabilities of one. But the other thing is there isn't going to be a discrete graphics card, as far as they know, yet. Yeah. Now... (laughs) You John Carmack be, said it. On board is the future, my friend. You want it to be... Uh, to me, it just sounds like a tablet with a couple things glued on the side, really. I mean, they're well, trying to tout it... kind of what it is. That is yeah, what it is. But they're trying to tout it as something that isn't a tablet. It's a... Well, right. well what we did see at a CES, um, at least I saw it today, it could have been yesterday, I don't know. Um, but what we did see is an Ivy Bridge Ultrabook running... Um, it was F1, 2011-2012, don't know which version yeah, but, but in DX11. So we but, know that Ivy Bridge can run DX11, and I think that's the goal. But Brandon was saying... Is that no, there it wasn't a, a video. Nope, I, I did see an actual video? run of it. The, the original demonstration was a pre-recorded video. Mm-hmm. Later there was a, a second video posted. I um, can't remember which site. I think it was in Gadget. But they had a camera in front of one of these Ultrabooks, actually somebody playing the game. So it's capable of it. Mm. Um, So I think that's the route they're going with it. Now, Dan and I had gone back and forth a little bit on Twitter about the merits or or lack thereof of this (laughs) particular device. My only, like the only redeeming thing that I walk away with this from, you know, I, I walk away with it just thinking that, it's nice seeing somebody in the industry trying to be some sort of innovative. I feel a lot of the industry is kind of status quo, but we're kind of getting to a period where we're getting some pretty cool hardware out there, and yeah. they can do stuff that they couldn't do before. Now, do I think that anybody's going to buy this thing? No. No, yeah. and if you do, you're an asshole. Um, <laughs> well, I said the people that are going to buy it are, are going to be well, well-to-do or wealthy people that have money to burn. I mean, no one. If you're like, if I ever get a question on Twitter or we do, which I'm sure we will, like, should I buy the <laughs> Razer Fiona or build a gaming PC? But no, here's then, here's the thing: the well-to-do, they're going to go buy an iPad instead because that's of this true. status that comes along with buying an iPad. Yeah, and also, you can buy an iPad along with a, a similar well, controller setup. 
well, you know, that peripheral is probably 30 bucks. And if they have that much money, they'll buy the Fiona, too, because they don't. That doesn't matter. The right, whole but, thing is, if you're trying to keep it to eight hundred or a thousand dollars, you can build a gaming PC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and not only that, you could build you know, or if you want the portability, you could buy a laptop with a discrete graphics card that isn't necessarily gonna run anything everything on Ultra by right, any means. Right, but right. it's gonna you know, you can play, you know, your newest FPS on it in a playable manner that won't be, you know, detrimental. You'll have fun. For you know about a grand, so I, I just don't see it. Mm-hmm. I just uh, don't think there is a niche for it. <laughs> who's gonna play that? That's my question. Like, where is that? Like a mobile thing? Is that like something you carry around with you? Because I wouldn't carry that around with me. It's a ten-inch display, and you I'm figure not, those. I'm not gonna carry that stuff. around in my backpack, and I'm not gonna use it in public yeah. either. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's. And I'm things. not going to use it in my living room either because if I wanted to use something with thumbsticks and a screen, I'm just going to go over to my Xbox, which I don't really use anymore, besides for Netflix every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, well, I can that's just come whole, over to my computer. Yeah, the, uh, the Razer founder guy, uh, Min Tiang Lan, I believe is his name. Uh, he said that he pictures like four dudes sitting around in their living room yeah. with four, mm-hmm. <laughs> four Fionas, you know. Yeah, where are these dudes from? <laughs> I, bought I don't, a, know, I don't I, know where they're I'm from. Thinking that, and guess how many people I had a uh, local area uh, gaming with on PSP with? None, never. I've <laughs> never done that. It, it's no, it doesn't happen. So that's the no. thing. That's why I was disagreeing with Bob and, and Brandon, who can't talk for himself, which sucks. Um, <clears throat> Is that they were both, you know, happy that someone was trying to innovate. But to me, it wasn't even that. It was just there is this isn't even an exercise in innovation to me. If they're going to innovate, keep working on the blade. Try try to make, you know, new hardware because they said they had to get custom hardware for it because they want it to be kind of an ultra gaming book. Try to make that happen. Try to push the tech for that. Um, yeah. That's a more worthwhile endeavor, especially with where. Intel is developing processors specifically to make Ultrabooks very powerful and very light and cool. Yep. So I uh, I kind of I agree with that, but I also think part of me thinks that Razer doesn't necessarily intend to sell a ton of this product. I mean, it's a version one, generation one type product, and with all the movement towards uh, towards graphics being on board, I mean, who knows? Razer could be trying to position themselves in a year or two uh, to be a leader in this space. I mean, that's awfully optimistic, but um, I kind of agree with Bob that it's nice to see someone at least doing something a little different, not just trying to trying to spit out more laptops to compete with a MacBook, you know? Well, yeah. here's the other thing, too. Clearly, multi-touch is super popular. Everybody wants everything to be multi-touch, and even Windows 8 is going to be optimized for touch. Um so maybe in the future we'll see some kind of a blend of the blade and this project Fiona, to to an extent. Right. Um, see that would be but, cool. But I don't think this thing's going to gain traction because you're not going to get a whole lot of universal use out of it where you would with an ultrabook. So right. or a pure tablet for that matter. I think this is more and what we're looking at fair, here. It's fair, more I don't like, think it's a good buy either. Right. I don't think it's a product you should buy by any means when it costs as much as two iPads. Right. I'm just saying I think I think it's a I think it's a somewhat innovative product that maybe they intend to refine. Well, I think what we're looking at here it's more of something and, like a concept uh, car that you'll see at an auto mind. show. Brandon, you cut out pretty badly there. I don't know if we caught anything, but the <laughs> my point is we're looking at more of like a concept car. Um, yeah, I know yeah. they, no, they totally probably intend to sell this thing, right? but it's the same kind of thing. Here's here's a whole bunch of stuff that we want to pack in our you know next few years' worth of vehicles, so to speak, and uh, and that's kind of what we're I looking mean, who, at. Who knows, if, they're, if they're packing this kind of hardware, I don't know what they're going to pack in there. They may be taking a loss on all of these units. Just like then the Xbox 360, wasn't Microsoft losing money on that for like five years? 
That, I mean, that's entirely possible, but the fact of the matter is what they're competing for is right. rather than the enthusiast market, they're looking at the casual gamer and trying to bring them into the PC gaming world, right. and they're not going to succeed when you're competing with the likes of the iPad and even ARM-based and tablets. Right, right. that's right. what I'm saying. Oh. That's my point. I'm saying that they're willing to take that loss to get into that market, just like just like Microsoft took the loss when the PlayStation 2 was king. You know I, I, I mean? just don't. I don't see them making enough. Yeah, of a it's not going to be the same to get thing. them into it. Yeah, I mean, right. they're not going to be able to bring no. the price down. Like, because you have the Nvidia Tegra three um, la- tablets that are coming out, and they've got some pretty damn <laughs> impressive graphics. And I mean, I don't know if anybody else has an iPad too. Um, what's the what's the game that I have? That one um, game, yeah. That, you let me play that one time. Uh, oh god. I never, yeah, I can't think of the name of it. Well, anyway, it's like built on Unreal. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's the Unreal on. Engine. Um, it shows you how much I play with my iPad too. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, moving right along, I just I, I don't see them competing effectively with um, with ARM based. And to be honest with you, I had a quick Twitter exchange with somebody a couple days ago regarding the entrance of ARM processors into the desktop space, which is what I see happening in the next couple of years. Intel's going to have competition, I think from ARM-based solutions. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if Somebody compete. NVIDIA... It's gonna, I think it's going to be NVIDIA. NVIDIA and Intel already have kind of a frenemy relationship as it is, and I wouldn't be entirely surprised if NVIDIA comes out with... You know, when Windows 8 comes out, which will have native ARM support, NVIDIA is going to come out, and uh, they're going to say, hey, don't bother with your Intel Core Series chips. Buy our Tegra-based chips. So, oh, uh, Bob's in the hardware, in case you guys didn't know. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what I see the industry doing in the next couple of years. I think we're going to have more of this x86 versus ARM war, and who knows what's going to happen. A lot of the problems with x86 is uh, the licensing with Intel. So, you know. Brandon just reminded us the game is called Infinity Blade. It is Infl- <laughs> Infinity Blade. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. He's so mad right now. Listeners, he's so angry. Um, Which is is an amazing game. I mean, you know, kind of limited in what it does, but it shows you the graphics capabilities, and I just don't see Razer taking away the casual gamer who's going to pick up an iPad going to Project Fiano. So is case closed, perhaps? Pretty much. It's ass. There it is. (laughs) I'd rather buy a PlayStation Vita. It's not PC gaming if it's a controller. You guys aren't that's, bringing this up. There's fucking That's control- true. No. It's 100% true, John. It's a console. I mean, there can be touchscreen games, but that just makes it a tablet. If there are joysticks and buttons on controllers, it is not PC gaming, no matter what people say. I'm, I'm with you on that. Now, I'm with you on that. And this is the best quote from this whole thing. And this is why I tweeted the article with LOL, and that was it. <laughs> Um, oh, where is it here? God, it's such a good quote. Okay, and this is from Razer's founder, okay? Now, what have we established in what we just talked about? Well, it's basically a tablet with a couple controllers on the side, right? This is from him. PC gaming is impossible on a tablet. <laughs> we looked at that, focused on that, and now Project Fiona is the only tablet in the world designed specifically for PC gaming. Which isn't true. <laughs> it's, it's a tablet, bro. It's a tablet. It doesn't have a keyboard. Well, not technically. And I feel like PC gaming, yes, there are some games that do better with a controller. We know that. But the control interface is a huge part of making it defined as PC gaming. So, yes, there's other stuff, the graphics, the options, the mods. But, no, you can't even say this is that's your quote right after you say that this is impossible on this interface but we are making it not impossible on the impossible thing that's what razor's doing yeah it's kind of not helping your point there to totally disregard it one sentence before yeah that Um, was that was why when i tweeted i was just kind of like wow just yeah wow but it is i mean hardware wise they want it to be a full-fledged pc so is it going to work? I think we all can agree. Probably not. <laughs> right. Right. If someone gives it to me, will I try it? Yes. Yes. Will That'd I tell you it sucks after pass. I try it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Um, right it's along. time. Time for yeah. the quick hits. The yes, quick sir. of the news hits. Anyone can chime in on these if they want. Um, I don't think any of us play Star Wars The Old Republic, but... I might pick it up. I canceled my yeah. WoW subscription, so... Yeah, I'm so tempted, dude, but I don't want to pay two monthly subscriptions. Um, We're sucked in until Diablo, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which will suck me in then into Diablo, so I just don't see myself having time. But... It's always an exciting time uh, when a content patch is out for an MMO because it's usually a massive change, um, more than most games. Sometimes in the case of WoW, it pretty much creates a new game <laughs> based on the same platform. So there's been a lot of performance issue complaining um, in the Old Republic, and this patch, is, it looks like it's going to change a lot of that and add a lot more graphics options. So people who are having trouble, there's hope. Uh, you could see in the next couple months any of those problems go away. Because all I've heard about the game is that it's really good. So if you're having technical problems, bear with it. That's what I would say. Until this patch comes out. So, we got that. It's also going to bring... What they're doing, which is different from WoW, everything in WoW is static. As far as like instances and raids. They're adding new bosses to the same places to further story, which I think is pretty cool. Because it's yeah. such a story-based MMO. That, so, that keeps the fun of everything together. I mean, because yeah. if, if we go through an instance one time on Heroic, we're going to be able to do it every other time, and then there's no sense of exploration with it. Right. Yeah, the first time you go in, you'll get those quests, you know, John? Like, for the first time you do one, and you get a storyline there, and wow, and then it ends. But what they're doing is putting, like, I don't know the story, but it's like four, you know, new guys popped up in this area you already conquered, now you've got to figure out why and go in and destroy them. So it's pretty cool. They're making the story. That's supposed to be the huge draw is the story. So props to Bioware for that. Also, the Beast Mode itself, AMD 7970, is purchasable, although you're going to have a hell of a time finding one. <laughs> um, but it is purchasable. One of us might have one soon. I don't know. Can't confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, that's what they're saying to me. Mm, mm. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> but um, I'll give you a hint. It's not Scott. It's not, not me. Because yeah. I have never heard of this news as of yet. But um, they're up to about seven hundred dollars on some retailers when they their retail price is five fifty. Wow. So uh, <laughs> they're in high demand, obviously, with a new part. They are. The best video card that's you know the best single GPU. So um, if you're if you got the money, it's gonna beat anything you probably have. So uh, next, uh, wow, this is cool. John told me about this way before I posted it. I hadn't seen it. World of Warcraft uh, servers, and I think I think uh, Old Republic also has the server system where you are kind of stuck on your own server. But WoW is putting in uh, cross-realm raids now. So your server mm. is starting to mean less and less and less. Uh, it's dwindling. Pretty, yeah, pretty much everything is cross-server now, um, which is a good thing. It's it's a huge positive move, I think. You know, don't feel real stranded on your server anymore. You can play with friends no matter where they are. I think faction, it's limited by faction. Yeah, yeah it's still faction but, but that's to be expected. Right. So the only thing limiting you playing with your friends is if they're Alliance and your Horde or vice versa. So that's pretty cool. It remains to be seen if they try to do an auction house. I think they will. That could get fucked up <laughs> really fast. Um, oh, yeah. Because realm economies are kind of their own beast. And um, <laughs> I don't know if spreading it across, you know, ten realms would be the best idea. <laughs> no, I mean, you can't even do battle groups with that because each server is different. I mean, there's servers with like 10,000 people on them and those people aren't going to have the gold that people from a server like Malganus are going to have. Yeah. So, for those of you who well, don't I know think... about WoW... Oops. Sorry, what? I was just going to, as a former player, I think the cross-realm um, rating is already going to have an effect on the economy of a server as it is. But that's, that's yeah, I don't well, it'll have a positive effect on small realms. Um, 
in or, a or items. Or, I mean, available. if there's tradable, right? But if there's tradable mats that you can pull out of a, a certain, you know, out of a raid that you might not normally have access to on a smaller server, you know, that could be problematic. Yeah. So overall, I think it's you can't do the highest raid though. Okay. So they're protecting the highest content still, which is a good um, thing, as it should be. They're protecting the hardcore players from the casuals still. Good. Okay. Good, Blizzard, is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> as someone who was once hardcore and is now casual, I still say that should be the case. <laughs> if you want to play that much, you should be rewarded. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a good thing. I have yet to see how this battle tag thing is going to work, but... I don't know about that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Rocat, which is a or Rocat, I don't even know how you pronounce that. I think it's a German word. Well, they make uh, good shit, people. I think it's Rocat. Well, I've heard of Do they, John? Do you, like, I haven't yeah, really. I've, yeah, they had a, uh, it, what, what, the, what the hell was it? Um, do you know what I'm talking about? In Squirrel Hill, there's, by, it's, it's a place in Pennsylvania, there's a little land center there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they uh, it, on their PCs that they have there for you to rent or whatever. Um, they they use Rocat everything. Huh. The guy, yeah. the guy's from Asia. The guy who owns it. So I uh, guess he brought yeah. a ton of shit with him. But uh, I've I've used the mice. Uh, the keyboards. I mean, it was just a keyboard. You can't really tell if you like a keyboard right away. But I definitely enjoyed the mouse. I was there for a Guitar Hero tournament like two years ago. Yeah, the uh, Clayman is one of our favorite players. Um, on on the PC and and on one of the best video makers, the guy knows what he's doing. Uh, he uh, he is sponsored by them, but he did say, you know, seemed very honest that he said uh, the mouse that he uses, which isn't going to be in the U.S. initially, uh, is is the best mouse he's ever used, and he's pretty much used the gamut of mice. So uh, I'll take his word for that. So, but that's cool. Any company bringing some quality peripherals over. I'm happy with. Yeah. So. The uh, last wicket is the XCOM reboot is coming out. And that series is kind of dear to a lot of people's hearts. So it's kind of turn-based strategy, the new one. Um, There's also another one being worked on that's going to be an FPS. But that's not really the one most people will be concerned about. Um, So it looks pretty good. Uh, Hexadecimal, the guy who wrote our little first look, he is, it was hardcore into it, uh, back in the day. And I guess Scott said he played U- UFO Defense as well. Mm. Yeah, XCOM UFO Defense, I played a lot back in the day. So it's like turn-based. Turn, turn-based. Strategy. Tactical military yeah, Like combat. civilization kind of thing. So, yeah. um, keep an eye out on that and see if they screw it up or not. <laughs> Likely. What? <laughs> Likely. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, nice. Yes. Nice. Nice. Uh, round round table. We don't really have a ton of time actually right now, but I do want to get into talking a little bit about the Diablo three news or rumor or not totally confirmed yet, but well, I mean it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen at some point that Diablo three will be coming to uh, to a console near you. Uh, guess, guessing after the, you know, after the PC version, we're assuming here, imported from PC to console. Obviously yeah. not the other way around. Um, yeah, the game's pretty much done for PC. But so. I have in my comments here, reactions, thoughts, opinions, slash Dan crying. So, Dan, wow. do you want to <laughs> lead us out on that? Because you were pretty upset well, about I'm it. always, back when we, the similar situations to this, um, Carmack, Tweeting that he's in love with the console. Um, one of the legends of PC gaming. And and to me, it's just another one basically saying, well, in the future, we're going to really look at consoles as something we want to do. Now, obviously, with some other Blizzard IPs, such as StarCraft, impossible to put mm-hmm. on a console, obviously. Uh, World of Warcraft... In my opinion, possible. Some people say it would work, but there's just too many damn buttons for it to work. That'd be hard. Um, Control freaks, dude. <laughs> they give you more buttons. Control freaks give buttons you more... on the top and side. Oh. No, I think I think in order to cast things, you should have to do like a combo. You know, like connect. Street connect. Fighter. Connect. No, like in Street, connect. 
You were like back in the day with Street Fighter. Oh, you could use Kinect. Think about that, dude. You'd be a mage and casting your magic. Oh my god. You'd have to do like the Hadouken. Yeah, every, I'm actually every down with this. Let's has, actually get that going. going. It'd be crazy. You get a crazy extra. You imagine a two hour raid? You'd, you'd, oh my yeah. god. Drenched. You'd that just... would that would cure American <laughs> obesity. <laughs> Everyone would be 110 pounds. <laughs> Everyone just like ripped, back. just or super just ripped, lean. Actually, yeah, because they wouldn't back. eat either, because they'd be playing WoW all day. All day. So they would just be. <laughs> Man, this like sounds that. like a great health initiative. Wow. Oh. But my, I don't think it's going to have any effect on the PC version. Let me make that clear. That's, you were uh, mad. You were mad when you read. I'm it, just. To be honest. I'm mad. You're mad. Um, all right. Yeah. That's fine. Because I don't want to see Blizzard. Maybe it's. I think it's also kind of one of those. Uh, the the word is escaping me right now, but it's kind of like uh, not jealousy, but like yeah, you're jealous like, of the platform for for yeah. gaming. Yeah. It's like this is one of the PC developers. Oh, yeah. I, in my opinion, it's Blizzard yeah. and Valve. They are the PC developers, so, and now both of them are doing a con- PC to console right. port with so CS:GO is, for Valve and like, D3. This is like for Dan when when his uh, girlfriend at some point or another, had said, I think I want to see other people, too. Yeah, right? that's not a bad analogy. That's not, yeah, that's a pretty good one right yeah, there. You're like, yeah, another one could be, Bob, since you you and I both have children, uh, is one child being very jealous of the uh, of the baby. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. You. So, you don't want yep. to share. Console, that's really what console is, a helpless little baby. <laughs> 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 that happens to get 30. I just don't FPS. agree with that. I just don't agree with that. Listen, listen. But I do think if they were going to choose a game to go to console, this one makes sense. Um, simply because the controls aren't going to be that compromised. Yeah. The game is not a crazy graphical experience. It's a hack and slash RPG. So, I mean, and they're not allowing mod support. They're going to make a so. when that comes again. They're going to make an absolute killing on that. I mean, oh, people will. Dude, that'll be probably. I can't. The hype alone. Yeah. Kids who have never heard of Diablo. Yeah. The thing is, it doesn't take a, that good of a PC to run Diablo. No. So I don't. I don't think that they're going to have that pool going. You know, you don't have a high end PC, but you can still play Diablo because you can play Diablo on like a laptop with a crappy graphics card at this point. Right. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to be able to flex that, and I think that's what would have pulled, you know, the most. The most of a con, they're the largest amount of audience from the console side would have been the fact that you don't have a PC, you can't run this. But if you have a laptop for school, you can probably run it. Yep. And yeah, but also the fact that people don't people game on what they're familiar with, though. People, you know what I mean. So even if they have PCs, most of the people will game what their friends game on. So like, I, I don't know. Like I think too, just the name, like you were saying, Dan. The name of Diablo is just it's even if even if they're you know eight years old and they don't remember yeah, or they weren't yeah. around it's weren't gaming around. lore dude you right mean. so right let's admit it's a huge franchise and yeah. Blizzard Blizzard and is a business Blizzard. they're they're Blizzard. in the business they're in the business of making money and yeah. and they're gonna make money I mean they're gonna be laughing all the way to the bank no. so I mean the controls do lend themselves to the to the uh, the console so that's not a big deal. I also I think that you'll what you'll see is the thing we've talked about with Counter Strike Go. Now we don't know how the platform is going to go as far as because Diablo three is based completely out of BattleNet, um, which is Blizzard's PC platform. It's not like Steam where there's any sort of plan in place at all, at least that we know about. To Steam's going with that what is it called the the big big Steam or something like that for for big big. Uh, High definition monitors, so that they can have Steam on console, basically, uh, yeah. and on smart TVs. But CS:GO, you can imagine playing a PS3 player with thumbsticks versus a PC player with his keyboard and mouse. The dude with thumbsticks is going to get shit on. <laughs> yeah, all the time. But, right. but what about auto aim? Well, they were. I don't know that they'll program that in. I don't, Left 4 Dead didn't yeah. have it. Yeah, that was the same. Have it. If, if it's the same TF2 engine, didn't. Left 4 Dead and TF2. <laughs> yeah. I mean, TF2 on Xbox was a fucking quality title. But, um, <laughs> it had a lot of patches. Neither, neither of those games. Yeah, all, all the items, the Manco store is really thriving. Over <laughs> but if they don't have aim assist, it's the same engines. Yeah. I mean, they won't. Weeks, obviously, but I, I don't think they'll have it. 
Yeah, and they they haven't said whether or not you know D three is going to be a cross platform when whenever it happens because it's going to be out for PC before yeah. it's out for console. Like if we get it this year on PC, you might get it next year on console. Uh, the team they have is just looking into doing it. They I don't even think they have much done as far as uh, it's going to happen though. But yeah. uh, the thing is, there is a PvP in D three. There's an arena. And I don't know how it's going to lend itself to esports at all. It's in beta, but who knows? I mean, they said said they didn't want it to be competitively, or they didn't want it to be that competitive, though. It was just kind of an addition for LOLs. Uh, That could change quickly. But but I think a dude with hotkeys would just shit all over a dude with a controller. Oh, yeah. Even in that game. I mean,. Have you seen those professional StarCraft players? Let those guys get a hold of a keyboard <laughs> and do work. But yeah, if the game my if the game the game isn't going to change too much because of it, we're going to get our PC port version. I just don't like Blizzard doing it at all. <laughs> they should stay true. Damn it. Yeah, no, I, I I see that that jealous side of of you. I mean, I I feel it too. I felt the same thing when. Dan has heard... cried over the Diablo franchise. He's allowed to be jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I felt the same way when, you know, I heard that CS was going to be on console. With Yeah, like, with the Valve thing. I was like, ah. Oh. But at the end of the day, like, they're not going to – I really don't think they're going to – I'm not worried in the same vein. No, of, I'm not worried about Valve. I don't – yeah, you don't have to be worried about Blizzard. I, However, I, 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 am, I am slightly worried about whatever the hell Project Titan is. Oh, uh, yeah. It's an MMO. If it's an MMO, which I think it's going to be – Blizzard, I mean, it would be stupid for them not to, in my opinion. Do it, do a new direction with an MMO. Right. But MMOs don't really work on consoles well at Fancy all. Fancy Star Dog, play that every, every day. <laughs> DC, DC Universe, Whoa. DC yeah. Universe, yeah. Oh, that did well too. Very Brittany, cool. Brittany played the hell out of that. Pink, Pink Ranger. Did but well. uh, MMOs lend themselves to the PC. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Two chat for it to not to not be a PC title, right? Yeah. If it if it goes that way, then I think it's going to be a PC title, which I think it's gonna. So, but it just worries me a little bit that maybe they'll think eh, maybe we can get these dollars, but maybe Bobby Kotex got a gun to their head. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I, I think the exact I think the exact opposite. I think that it could end up being a good thing, only because. Um, you know, I don't. I don't think they're going to stop making PC titles anytime soon, and they know who butters their bread. So, if it uh, if it gives us if it gives them more cash to you know to make more PC titles and maybe put out more than uh, a title every couple of years, like they seem to do right now, every ten. And I think that's fine. Let them, let, yeah, let them make a lot of money off of a console version that probably isn't that hard to port anyway, and give us more great PC games. Yeah, Agreed. it's a good way to look at it. Alleviating my stress. Nice. I had to say nice because I say it after everything. Nice. Um, nice. Nice. Uh, all right. Well, we're like we're at an hour seven minutes already, and we haven't even touched on Twitter questions, so we should probably do that now. I think it is time. It's kind of a crazy day though in gaming. Yeah, there was a lot all, of there was a all lot those of major news. stories were pretty much today. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, there, I was. I'm glad we we were able to hash out some of it. There's there's a lot, and you know how I feel about hash. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got some doozies of Twitter questions. Oh here. boy. Oh boy. All right, let's go. Let's go. And now it's time for Twitter questions with the KB Mod Podcast. Um, I don't know if Brandon Brandon I'll do one, but if you have one, <laughs> Brandon's already posting. So oh yeah, that so one's good. really good. Okay. That one's awesome. This one's from Slam Tarts. <laughs> Will KB Mod introduce an online dating service? <laughs> wow. Brandon's response is yes. They're called the KB Mod forums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that I think we could brand that. I think we could have our. I mean, we already run ads on the site, so we would get our own banner. We can have a little offshoot. Have a little link on there. Everyone posts their profile pics, and I don't think it would be that hard to integrate, Bob. I think you could get right on that. Start working yeah. on that. Yeah, I'll talk to some Sean. good duck faces. 
Yeah. I'll talk to Sean. Um, we can set up, uh, you know, profiles so everybody can talk about how they like walking down on the beach. I know that's why you're moving to uh, California, by the way. Well, yeah. Long, long walks on the beach with other dudes. Right, and it would be a lot easier to find them if we had an integrated dating service on the site. <laughs> Right. So, right. so until we do that, I would suggest uh, joining up on the KB Mod Steam group for now. You can private it, message and, each other if, if right? you want to. That's true. Them. I don't want to know the content of the private messages. No. <laughs> and uh, frequenting the the KB Mod forums as well. Also, yeah. public parks at night. Another good place. Night hawking. Yeah. Night hawking. <laughs> Keeps you fit as well, just like Warcraft <laughs> on the Connect. <laughs> What else? Ooh, okay. We got a lot, dude. All right. I got a couple of really good serious questions, too. This one is from the Mr. Flux. <clears throat> if you could go to one concert of any band, what would it be? They can be all be dead. They can be broken oh, up. And... Well, Josh Groban. I'm just kidding. <laughs> One band to be broken up, was it? No, no, no. It's one band to see live in concert. Anytime. But they can be, you know, so if you wanted to see the Beatles, you could go see the Beatles. Oh. Hmm. Man, that's hard. Um. uh, Brandon says in chat that his answer is Coldplay. (laughs) (laughs) I really like Um, Clocks. That's I'm going to go with, with Aqua. Aqua? Really? Barbie girl? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, I was like trying to think, what have they done? Nice. That's not a bad answer. Who's the, Who's that French band that sang the I'm Blue song? Remember? I'm Blue. <laughs> that electronic band. Eiffel 12 or whatever. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. Uh, uh, okay, so serious I'm answer. Stan. Dan, yeah. surely you've got a serious good answer. There's so many. Well, this is have. tied for me. The Clarks. It's... <laughs> Die in a fire. Fuck you. <laughs> um, it's tied between a couple bands. Yeah. Um, Smashing Pumpkins on on the Melancholy Tour. That that era. I saw that tour. God, you're a dick. <laughs> wish I had. That'd be amazing. Um, or Led Zeppelin original lineup in the 70s when I'm they were all on drugs. Zeppelin. Yeah. Zeppelin in their prime would be a great thing to see. Brandon had a very well thought out. He says Metallica circa 1990 dual headlining with Pantera and Megadeth and Stevie Ray Vaughan as the starter bands. Wow. Wow. That wow. was well thought out. Wow. Wow. Um, that is well thought out. He's... I would like to bring Kurt Cobain back from mm. the afterlife. From and, after uh, being killed by his his wife. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have no proof. All right. <laughs> you don't have that. Oh, story. yeah, because people shoot them in the, themselves in the face with a shotgun with their toe. Yeah. <laughs> you don't off. got the proof. All right. <laughs> bring the evidence and we'll confirm. Clearly a Courtney, Courtney Love fan. Uh, I'd like to see Nirvana. Um, Good one. And I guess, um, you know, let's have Foo Fighters open for them. Ooh. That could be good. At Wembley Stadium. Yeah, at Wembley Stadium. I'd, if you've not seen that on HDNet, that is one of the most amazing yeah, concerts you're ever going to see. You know, I really liked I really liked Queen. That might be a good gay, but I'd love to see Queen live because I've watched some of their um, the, the live shows at, um, I forget what their most famous one is that's recorded, mm-hmm. but. Freddie Mercury energy on stage is pretty crazy. The crowd's I ooh. see a little silhouette of a yeah. man. Queen, dude. That would be sick. Yeah. And, you know, obviously Cody and Cambria, which is my favorite band. I would see ooh. them open in their original form as Shibuti, <laughs> which was awful, <laughs> by the way. And then they would open as Shibuti, and then it would be Coheed, and then it would be... Um, Claudio, Claudio by himself, and then Aqua. Yeah, Aqua would be Aqua. Aqua. Close out the show. Aqua with Barbie, <laughs> Barbie Girl or Barbie World. <laughs> Grave Makers and Gunslingers. Hell yeah. Oh, oh God. God, I didn't know yeah. you liked Coheed, Brandon. Wow, I don't know how I missed that. I know Brandon Brandon. listens to Jay-Z. <laughs> He's a big Jay-Z fan? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Yes. Pick me up Who from the that? airport. He was bumping, bumping Jay Z. New York. Uh, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's copyrighted. Oh. Can't say that. Wow. You couldn't hear the radio over my engine, faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, big muffler car. Big muffler. All right. Pages. Next. Yes. Okay, we've got. Brandon really wants us to ask this one by Voltage Z. What will be the most? Me- this is a good question. What will be the most memorable PC game when you look back in ten years, or so? Wow. Warcraft, absolutely hands down, without question. Hmm. I think it will be Blizzard's new game. Dan's going to say Modern Warfare 3, actually. <laughs> he would have wow. said that at one time, but he's totally off that bandwagon now, Bob. He does that a bit far. Bit far trip far. runner. Bit Dan, trip Dan has runner. <laughs> <laughs> nightmares. Bit trip runner might be memorable because it's the game I killed myself, too. I don't think you can dispute <laughs> the absolute just impact that Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, the video game, <laughs> educational, <laughs> had, on, had on the world. God. I had that on CD-ROM. Just yeah. legendary. It's great. I had the board game. <laughs> that and Mavis Beacon teaches typing t- totally. We <laughs> both I knew about gaming. Um, I'm going to have to go with World of Warcraft just because of the yeah. probably the people that I met in-game and the amazing time suck that game is. Yeah, that the impact of that game, too, is going to be felt I'm for sucked. years. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it could go two ways. Like you could look back at Brink and think, "What a disaster!" <laughs> <laughs> well played. Yeah, I thought we wanted to encourage people to play Brink competitively. Yeah, we need to get that scene going for QuakeCon this year, <laughs> as if it already weren't sure. going. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's tough. I mean, I think uh, I mean I only played WoW to like level forty or something, and. But I, I agree, like, just the impact and the social impact that that game has. Like, everyone knows what World of Warcraft is. It's just... Chuck so Norris is Hunter, for fuck's sake. Yeah, exactly. Chuck Norris advertising. How about <laughs> Mr. T's game? Yeah. How about Dead Island for exactly how not to launch a game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All that hype. Listen, dude, just no clip, all right? Just play through it. Just no clip. Play through it, baby. <laughs> yep. Um... Yeah, I think I'll, I'll actually say I'll say Project Titan as well because I think Blizzard has big shoes to fill after World of Warcraft, and I think I think they'll refine what they did with World of Warcraft. So I think in ten years, that could be it. Or I'll say Tribes Ascend because I think that could, I think I could spend a lot of time playing that, and that could end up being my most memorable game. Right. Yeah. In ten years, Tribes Ascend is going to be your Counter Strike source, as it was to me. <laughs> I'll be like Brandon still playing Tribes Ascend. <laughs> Certainly possible. Later. Play, in, play until they turn the servers off. Yeah. Or until you're on a version of Windows in which it can't run. <laughs> and then people still play <laughs> Ultima <laughs> Online. Do they? That's true. Yep. Yeah. Really? Do. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> talked about that. Yeah, no, you had mentioned that before. That's insane. Yep. Wow. Original Star Seeds Tribes doesn't run on Windows 7. I watched a really cool... Oh, I That's think what I Windows Virtual PC is for. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Ultra yeah. Online. There was Duh. Machinima did a really good. Um, I think it's the. Uh, it's just like the recap series, and, and I think Ultima and like some of the crazy growing pains of that game. I think I. You know what? I think I mentioned this in a previous podcast. I'm not going to talk about it because I. I think I already <laughs> brought it up. Next question. Do you have a question? Okay, I've got some. All right. <clears throat> this one is from Firebird. If Dom blocks Dom, with that. Would that create an all dominant reality in which Doms rule the sky and swim in the forests of trees and poo? <laughs> Dom. 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 Brand Dom. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> at S and at S and D's, Dom. <laughs> That's the Brandon. answer actually. It's the only extent. Brand Dom. Um, yeah. Here's one. Uh what is David Fincher's finest film? Girl with Dragon Tattoo. Girl with Dragon Best one. Tattoo. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Tattoo. I haven't even seen it, but since Alex didn't like it. It's so good. I'm Better than that. Super 8. God, that's hard. <laughs> hard to do. What was that question you just asked? What is David Fincher's finest film? Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> the alternate version with a lot of shagging. 
the best. <laughs> Many brink alleys are in the alternate version. <laughs> Or maybe that's – I just found that strolling across a random tube galore site. That uh, might be my fault. What's, what's our time, Scott? What's uh, time? We're at like 120. So let's let's do like two more questions. No. Okay. This one's from Night, right? Yeah, that one's getting ass, Bob. Don't worry. <laughs> Should, this one's from Night, right? Should I use C++ or Java to code my tribe's infinite blue plate hack or Nikki hack? In order to ensure fast vertex buffer performance. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Both at the same time. It's a board. Yes. What, what, can you read the – what is the last part of that? Vertex what? Vertex. Buffer performance. Wow. I think you want you just it. added I vertex in there. I think the answer is Slurpee. <laughs> Whoa, dog. Whoa. 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 Yeah, I agree, Slurpee. All right. Or hot. I have, for 99 cents. One last question. This one's a doozy. This is from Dixon Butt. <laughs> if you were to combine three cats into a catapede, would it think it's one big cat or three separate cats? <laughs> That's a really fucking stupid, so I'm going one big cat. One big if cat. you were to combine three cats, would it think? Um... It would have to know it's not. Uh, I think cats are pretty stupid. Yeah, they are dumb. I agree, but they're really stupid. Maybe it's like menstruation, and they just get on the same cycle, and their brain waves go with each other, and it thinks it's one big cat, like menstruation. I don't know why it's <laughs> brain waves menstruation. Bears can smell the menstruation. <laughs> wow. And on that uh, note, I am trying to think through it. I don't. I, I think it, they would still think they're separate. I think they would. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm they think they're one. The, why am I putting three cats together? That's my question. Why not? So we can finger three cats at the same time. There's no question. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have just another... one big cat. You wouldn't have access. He, to one. To one of them, you would. <laughs> if it's a if it's a catapede, you have the very back. <laughs> oh God. Would it think it's another cat if it was a catapede? Ooh. No, that's the real question. <laughs> it changes its personality completely. Thinks it's a different cat. <laughs> the the first think, cat just cat. looks really appalled. Like, <laughs> I know that's cat. not another cat. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, let's wrap this up, and uh, we will see you next week with episode twenty-five. With a guest next week. Yes, we will have oh. a guest. Do we want to talk about it, or do we want to wait? Yeah. And see. Mr. Fuzzy Underballs will be on next week. Yes, he will. Good lad. Look forward. Twitch TV. Yeah, I'm getting robot voice. I really hope that. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. All right. See you guys next week. Um. Oh.